Hey guys, it's Wayne Santos, one of the editors here at CGM, and for this week's Sound Off, let's talk about contemporary RPGs, which is actually not a very commonplace setting for RPGs. Um, the reason I'm, you know, it's like getting all excited about this is because, you know, well, we now know that Persona 5 is coming, there have been trailers and all that sort of thing, but watching the trailer for Persona 5 and getting excited for it all over again just reminds me of the fact that we really don't see a whole lot of um, role-playing games that you know take place in the everyday world that we live in. Um, on the one hand, you've got the super ultra-popular, let's go all Tolkien-esque, you know, fantasy genre, which everything from Dragon Age, Inquisition, to um, you know, it's like Baldur's Gate and The Witcher and all of those other games go. And then you've got science fiction, which is um, slightly less common, but you know, still a fairly popular um, backdrop. In, You've got things like Mass Effect and the uh, amazing, amazing Xenosaga series back in the PS2 days. Um, but when it comes to setting things in um, the everyday world that we live in, for whatever reason, most developers think that people aren't interested in that. And I'm not sure why. Now, um, on the Western side, we've had a few rare exceptions here and there. The most prominent one is Alpha Protocol by Obsidian. And um, even they took it to, um, let's call it an extreme in that you know it's like it, it was like james bond it does take place in a modern setting but it's all fairly extremist international espionage spy stuff but then you get the persona series and um, while there's a heavy surreal fantastical element to what persona is all about one of the most fascinating things to me about it is that it actually covers what for japan would be like um, a normal backdrop um, up until Persona 4, all the previous Persona 3 games all took place in some kind of urban setting. Usually it was like some sort of district in Tokyo. Um, Persona 4 shook things up by actually just going rural and you know, going to the small fictional town of Inaba. And now with Persona 5, it looks like we are going back to um, Tokyo again. But the thing about it is that it's not about super spies. I mean, it's true demons may come in and you know it's like there's all kinds of crazy dungeon uh, dungeon roaming that's happening but it essentially focuses on the lives of you know japanese teenagers and it actually focuses on the social element you know it's like they talk to people they make friends and you know it's like the bonds that they form have an impact you know not only on the real life but uh, their fantastical demon slaying life as seen throughout you know the rest of the persona game and despite the fact that you know a lot of the gameplay might actually just involve hanging out with friends and helping them out and making them to become better people this is actually really compelling stuff that like draws people in um persona 4 is obviously the giant uh in the series you know the one that you know persona 5 is going to be compared to probably all other subsequent persona games are going to be compared to and when you ask most people about that game and what their favorite things are in that game, the one thing that constantly keeps coming up is um, your surrogate sister in that game, the little girl, Nanako. And she is not in any way exceptional. She's just a very sweet, very generous, caring little girl that's trying to do her best in a single parent household. And yet, despite the fact that there is absolutely nothing extraordinary about her, uh, aside from her sweetness, everybody fell in love with this ordinary girl. And Atlas is one of the few companies out there that is actually willing to say sometimes the mundane average things in life are the things that we remember most. And this is actually a lesson that, you know, it's like I wish other companies would, you know, it's like follow. So to, you know, it's like Bioware, you look at some of the things that, you know, Atlas is doing with Persona. You know, it's the like same thing with CD Projekt. You know, look at what happens in the Persona games and realize that sometimes ordinary and mundane is actually one of the most special things around. See ya.